Next, let me warmly welcome our guest of honor this evening, Senior Professor Surangi Yasavardhana, former Dean and Chair Professor of Anatomy at the Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of Sri Jayavardhana Pillar, who will, who will also be discussing yet another important area, accreditation in medical education. Members of the head table, my dear colleagues who are present here physically and who are joining online. Good evening to all of you. And first of all, let me uh, congratulate Professor Indika Karunathilaka for uh, coming up with a very timely need of this book on medical education, Journey of Healers. I think uh, congratulations, uh, Professor Indika Karunathilaka. It's a great, uh, I, I would consider it as a very timely need. And also I would like to thank the uh, expert committee on uh, medical education at uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk to this uh, gathering. Accreditation in medical education. Uh, what do we mean by accreditation of medical education? It is the certification of the suitability of, of a medical education program or programs and of the competence of medical schools in the delivery of medical education. So that later uh, with that, with this accredita accreditation process, we would ensure that the patient safety and competence in practicing doctors would be maintained. So in that sense, accreditation of medical education is a very timely need. The medical schools or degree awarding institutes, which are established under the uh, University Act number 16 of 1978 gives the power to the Sri Lanka Medical uh, Council, which is considered as the professional body, which is responsible in recognizing the uh, medical degree programs. So that power for any uh, professional body, for any professional course that is uh, like, uh, that is taught in the Sri, La in the, uh, Sri Lankan medical, Sri Lankan universities need to be recognized by a professional body. So when it comes to medical education or the medical course, the, that power or the, uh, the professional body is the Sri Lanka Medical Council, which would recognize the medical degree programs. And also uh, from the medical, say the medical ordinance, the part 3A clearly gives the power to the medical, uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council as the professional body under 19A, which clearly states that the, that the medical council can enter and make inquiries at recognized universities and institutions. Initially, the record, it, it has to recognize, and then later on, it gives the medical ordinance, gives the Sri Lanka Medical Council the power to say, make inquiries from the medical, uh, say the universities that are conducting medical uh, degree programs. And also it gives the power in section 19B, the power is given to the medical council to require recognized universities and institutions to furnish information. So if the medical council requests the uh, medical degree, uh, say the uh, me medical schools, they will have to uh, provide the, furnish the information. And also in 19C, the power of me the medical council is given the power to recommend if it is not happening properly, that if the medical education is not taking place properly in the medical schools that are recognized at the moment, even to withdrawal of the recognition of the qualifications. So undoubtedly, it is the Sri Lanka Medical Council which would be responsible in maintaining the 
standards uh, in recognizing and maintaining the proper standards of medical education in say whether it is been happening with the uh, at the medical schools. As all of you all know, to practice medicine in Sri Lanka, the medical degree need to be, first of all, the medical degree program need to be recognized by the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So that recognition is needed. Then the each uh, student or the, the doctor would have to provide to uh, say, uh, be able to uh, have, uh, say, give a certificate of good conduct. So the, uh, say the medical degree holder should be of good conduct. And if these two are satisfied, the provisional registration is granted by the Sri Lanka Medical Council for a period of one year. And then you are supposed to undergo the say, successful completion of the internship for a period of one year. And then if you successfully complete your internship, then the full registration. And with the full registration only that the, uh, you will be able to practice medicine in Sri Lanka. So that is the usual uh, form. And then the Sri Lanka Medical Council has been recognizing medical degree programs, both local and foreign degree programs right through. So at uh, every time when the when a new medical uh, school or a med new medical faculty is set up in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka they will have to write to Sri Lanka Medical Council, and the Sri Lanka Medical Council will recognize. I mean, after going through the medical program, they will recognize the medical degree program and make it say accept it as suitable to give the provisional registration. So that process has been, say, initially the recognition of this degree programs has been happening at the Sri Lanka Medical Council. But the monitoring, the periodic monitoring and renewals has been a little deficient. These programs have not been, the medical schools have not been uh, like uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council has not been visiting and seeing whether the, uh, they are conducting proper medical uh, programs. That part has been a little deficient in the, uh, in, with regard to the, that has not been happening well with regard to the Sri Lanka Medical Council. SLMC had not, has not been doing that properly. And this, with this background, in the world situation, the WHO in about, uh, I think, uh, 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 Professor Palita Bekon and uh, Dr. Palita Bekon and Professor Indika will be much uh, uh, more uh, uh, in a better position to tell about this. The, there had been this WHO policy on the promotion of accreditation of basic medical education, which was developed. This was coming around maybe in, nine, uh, in like uh, 1999, 2000 those years. And then it was agreed in a strategic partnership, the WHO in a strategic prior partnership with the World Federation of Medical Education, that is WFME, they came up with this uh, set of the WHO, WFME uh, guidelines on accreditation of basic medical education. So there are world guidelines on uh, say, uh, accreditation of basic medical education. Now here the word accreditation is being used, but in our old medical ordinance in Sri Lanka, the word used is the recognition of medical degree programs. The, the words are quite similar, but now the newer term that is being used is the accreditation of basic medical education. So with regard to this in Sri Lanka, the regulations on maintenance of, I would say the guidelines on uh, maintenance of uh, minimum standards of medical education. So the guidelines were prepared during uh, 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 Professor Lalta Mendes' time in, at the, as the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Council. The, clearly the guidelines were developed and the Medical Council practiced these guidelines when 
they were uh, recognized in the medical schools within Sri Lanka and even overseas. So these were not, this set of guidelines were not really uh, say were passed or gazetted or passed in the parliament. So that was an issue because according to the medical uh, ordinance for these guidelines per se will not be, have the legal, uh, say it's not uh, legally accepted. So these regulations on maintenance of minimum standards of medical education, there had been several attempts, I think you all would have even heard several attempts maybe in 2008, say even 2014, 16, 18 times, but finally it was minimum standards was gazetted and then it was passed at the parliament and it came into effect from 10th April of 2021. So now we have uh, legally accepted regulations on maintenance of minimum standards of medical education. When these were uh, formulated in Sri Lanka, like this all, uh, like uh, the WHO, WFME guidelines were strongly considered and based on that only, the Sri Lankan uh, say the minimum standards were uh, developed. So we are in line with the world standards. So Sri Lankan medical schools up to say, uh, even at present, the Sri Lankan medical schools that are listed in the world directory of medical schools are like accepted by the ECFMG and other uh, uh, accredi uh, accrediting bodies as accepted medical degrees. So that, for, that is the present situation. So then there was uh, again an extra stimulus was, uh, came into effect because suddenly the, uh, I would say the uh, ECFMG, that is the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates of the USA, what they mentioned is, they stated that effective in 2023, only up to 2023, that they would accept what is in the World Registry of uh, Medical, uh, uh, say the uh, World Registry of Medical uh, Schools, they would accept as uh, recognized or acceptable medical degrees. So what happened, the deadline was given 2023 and later it was actually postponed to 2024 and the physicians applying for ECFMG certification will be required to graduate from a medical school that has been appropriately accredited. So we were given a deadline that is 2023 and that was uh, like postponed to 2024 now, this was mentioned in 2010 by the ECFMG. Now, no longer that we would accept unless it is accredited by a proper accrediting body. So, this was a real stimulus that for us to get activated. If we don't comply with this, our medical graduates will not be able to get foreign employment. Uh, so, it was a big task and the medical council had to somehow comply with this. To satisfy this requirement, the medical school must be accredited, as I mentioned, through a formal process that uses the criteria comparable to those established for US medical schools by the liaison committee uh, on medical education, that is LCME or that uses other globally accepted criteria, such as those uh, put forth by the World Federation for Medical Education or the WFME. So like uh, as uh, I mentioned before, like we had to get the, now in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Medical Council is the recognizing or the medical degree program accrediting uh, body. So now the Sri Lanka Medical Council has to be recognized by the WFME as the accrediting body. So that was very, very essential. 
So to fulfill that, the, at the Sri Lanka Medical uh, Council, the accreditation unit was established in the, in the year, I would say latter part of 2020, and in, say, in, it came into function really in 2021 with the uh, appointment of the uh, head of the uh, accreditation unit at the Sri Lanka Medical Council. And it is being headed by none other than a very suitable person for this position, Dr. Palita Abekon, sir, who is here with us today. So under his leadership, the accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council came into action. And the head is Dr. Palita Bacon. And then we have this committee of members. A uh, few members are there, medical educationists are there. And I, have, I am one of the committee members in the accreditation unit. So one thing that the WFME will be really looking into at the time of uh, accrediting this accreditation body, they would make sure that this accredited unit or the accrediting body in Sri Lanka need to be independent. So it should be an in very independent body who, who will be able to take independent uh, decisions without purely on the standards of medical education and none other, no political influence, nothing. So that was, we have to be show, we, we, it is a need that we have to show that we are an independent body. So that is why mainly the uh, accreditation unit was uh, set up in Sri Lanka Medical Council. But now you have to understand according in keeping with the medical ordinance and the university act, the Sri Lanka Medical Council is the finally who will be accrediting. So the accreditation unit comes under the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So that is the situation that, that is uh, that at present that uh, we are having. So this accreditation unit of Sri Lanka Medical Council need to be recognized by WFME as the accrediting agency for Sri Lanka. So now the initial application we have made to the uh, WFME and we have started the process. So if the WFME uh, recognizes the accreditation unit of Sri, uh, SLMC as the accrediting body, it will be mentioned under the directory of organizations that recognize the uh, uh, recognize or accredit medical schools, which we call as DORA. So that is the situation. So now the uh, accreditation unit is quite active in the Sri Lanka Medical Council. Now at the moment, we have uh, formulated the guidelines for the preparation of self-evaluation reports that is being prepared and you or some of you all would have even seen and uh, uh, in a paper advertisement where the reviewers were called to uh, express their interest and the uh, accreditation unit has uh, uh, like uh, selected the uh, pool of reviewers they, so the advertise, uh, advertise, selected, and we have conducted the uh, 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 training sessions, workshops, and now there is a, say, a pool of uh, reviewers who will be functioning as reviewers in the in the accreditation under the accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council, accrediting the uh, Sri Lankan uh, uh, medical degree programs. And also the guidelines for the reviewers to prepare the review report. So all these documents have been prepared. The medical schools have been informed that presently uh, out of the, uh, say, uh, 13 medical schools in Sri Lanka, only eight medical schools plus the KDU will be uh, are producing at present medical graduates. So all the uh, medical schools, the, uh, say, the eight medical schools have been informed to uh, uh, prepare their self-evaluation report. So those uh, guidelines have been sent to them. And at present, they are preparing their uh, self-evaluation reports as the first site visit, the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of Sri Dayawad 
So they prepared their self-evaluation report. It was submitted to the um, uh, accreditation unit. The reviewers have already visited the uh, Sri Javadanapura uh, medical uh, faculty and they have concluded the site visit and that we are expecting them to come up with the report. So that is the present situation. And also up to now, sir, today, uh, through this present situation, I think, uh, uh, you know, Colombo Medical Faculty and Kalania, uh, North Colombo uh, uh, Medical Faculty, they also have submitted their self-evaluation report. So the, the process has been really activated and we will be, uh, so the accredit accrediting process will go on. So the, uh, I, uh, at this moment, I will just li like to uh, uh, tell you all about the self-evaluation report. There are uh, nine main uh, sections, and they are like the, the sections which I, I have listed here, the general information, the vision, mission of the uh, university or the faculty, then the education program, which is the most important component in this, and the assessment of students, and the students' quality entry criteria and the academic staff, their qualifications, the, and uh, whether there is the proper ratios. Now, these are all will be evaluated in keeping with the uh, minimum standards gazette, which is the legal document now in, the, in effect. And also the program evaluation and quality assurance and the governance and management. So under these uh, nine headings, the self-evaluation report will be uh, uh, prepared by the medical uh, school or the medical faculty, then it will be submitted to the uh, accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council and the reviewers will visit, they will evaluate and then finally they will give their uh, report and that will uh, again be like come to the uh, accreditation unit and the uh, accreditation or the recognition will be finally uh, like the, uh, the accreditation unit will put that to the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council, the council meeting, which we, that meeting will be, uh, the meeting will just accept the decision of the uh, accreditation unit. So the important thing is the accreditation unit. So that is the pro, and, and as I mentioned, the accreditation process is the, which I just mentioned, submission of the self-evaluation report by the medical school, Panel of reviewers will be appointed. They will uh, do the site visit and they will come up with the review pro, uh, to say the review process, review report, and the, uh, uh, and also we give a chance if the uh, medical school is not uh, uh, not happy with the initial report that the uh, reviewers give. There is an appeal process and then final report will be prepared and then finally the accreditation will be again. So the accreditation will be stamped by the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council. So that is the uh, review process. And what is uh, like uh, proposed is every five years to see that the proper standards are maintained with regard to the medical degree programs. Every five years, the accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council will be doing this process. So it will not be once in a lifetime accreditation. So every five years, uh, the medical council or the accreditation unit will be doing the monitoring. So we, this process we have started and the Sri Lanka uh, Medical Council or the accreditation unit has made the initial application to the uh, WFME. Currently, today's position, the WFME we, FME website would clearly say under the agencies currently applying for recognition, the Sri Lanka Medical Council is listed and in, with regard to Sri Lanka. So the Sri Lanka in, in Sri Lanka, the uh, 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 Sri Lanka Medical Council would be the accredi accrediting uh, the agency for Sri Lanka. So this will be for both the uh, uh, local medical degree programs as well as for the foreign degree programs. So just to give the background with regard to the recognition, which is used, uh, the, that is the terminology used with, because that is the one used in the uh, medical ordinance, the medical council has been doing the uh, say recognition of the foreign and the uh, uh, and the Sri Lankan uh, degree programs. Now, in that background, I would again like to uh, bring up another small uh, uh, issue that is the Quality Assurance Council of University Grants Commission, which actually Professor Indic also mentioned. So this is the this is. 
again set up in the University Grants Commission, the Quality Assurance Council. So mainly that Quality Assurance Council will be looking at the quality assurance of the medical or the other degree programs. So they will be looking at all the degree programs and as a medical degree program is one degree program that is coming under the uh, University Grants Commission. So they will be conducting the medical degree program reviews from the uh, Quality Assurance Council of UGC and they will be looking into the quality assurance uh, aspects of the medical program. So this is also uh, once again, yeah, that is also every five years, the Quality Assurance Council from the UGC, they also will be evaluating the program. So if uh, uh, for me to be clear, for you all to be, I will just say at the end, that is the medical degree program will have to undergo very stringent uh, uh, conditions. So they will have to, comply with the Quality Assurance Council of UGC to maintain the proper quality assurance. And also as the professional uh, accreditation will be looked by the Sri Lanka Medical Council, mainly by the accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So that is the current, uh, uh, current situation. Now with the initial application, next the uh, WFME, most probably maybe somewhere in September, they will be visiting the visiting Sri Lanka and they will be looking at the, say they will be checking on the accreditation unit, how they are uh, conducting this accreditation process, whether they are independent, whether they are taking the proper decision. So they will be uh, working as observers when we do the acc accredi accrediting the medical programs in, uh, in the medical schools. And they will finally, the acceptance or the recognition will be after the site visit of few members from the WFME who will be uh, visiting Sri Lanka, who will be working with the, uh, observing the uh, functioning of the accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council, and then the final recognition will be given. So we are very hopeful and we are like uh, very positive that we will be able to get this full uh, accreditation to the uh, as the accrediting bo accreditation uh, body in Sri Lanka. So that is the present situation. So with that, I think uh, that uh, that is the uh, currently what is happening. So uh, I think it would be very good for everybody to be aware of the present situation, the present work that is being done by the uh, accreditation unit of the Sri Lanka Medical Council. And also I take this opportunity uh, to congratulate uh, Dr. Sajit uh, Edirisinga also who will be launching his other book with regard to my discipline, the anatomy. And it's a uh, easy guide to uh, anatomy, learning of anatomy. And I am sure it will be, I think it's just a first book of a series uh, concentrating on the upper limb and that will be helping the uh, medical students in getting the learning a difficult subject, I would say anatomy. And because there is little uh, part, memorizing part in anatomy, which I think with this book, uh, Dr. Sajit has made it easier. So I would like to congratulate Sajit also. Uh, and well, thank you very much once again, Professor Indika, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Palita Bacon, as the, sir, uh, uh, as the head of the accreditation unit, allowing me to do this presentation as just as a member. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for explaining that entire process very comprehensively.